Good evening. My name is Mark Syme. I am the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, March the 5th. We will sing, we will observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a short message that I hope will be useful to each one of us. We sing at Northfield from the songbook entitled Songs of Faith and Praise. I will give you the number and the name of the song. So if you don't have that book, perhaps you can Google it or find it and you'll be able to sing along with us. And so if you would please turn your song books to number 6363, I will call upon the Lord. <coughs> Sixty-three, I will call upon the Lord. <clears throat> I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The Lord liveth. And blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I know the Lord liveth. And blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord. Alrighty, if you would turn to song number 103. For some reason or another, I like to sing these two songs together. They are uplifting songs. Uh, this is uh, 103. The title is, He Has Made Me Glad. We will sing this through two times. He has made me glad. <clears throat> I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Before the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 18. The title of this song is Faithful Love. Number 18, Faithful Love. Faithful love flowing down from the thorn-covered crown Makes me whole, saves my soul, washes whiter than snow Faithful love calms each fear, reaches down, dries each tear Holds my hand when I can stand on my own Faithful love from above Came to earth to show the Father's love And I'll never be 
same. For I've seen faithful love face to face, and Jesus is his name. Faithful love is a friend, just when hope seems to end. Welcome face, sweet embrace, tender touch, filled with grace, faithful love, endless power, living flame, spirit's fire, burning bright in the night, guiding my way, faithful love. From above came to earth to show the Father's love, and I'll never be the same. For I've seen faithful love face to face. And Jesus is his name. For I've seen faithful love face to face. And Jesus is his name. We're instructed on the first day of the week to uh, observe the Lord's Supper. We are instructed through the scriptures. Uh, we know that this was done every Lord's Day, which is today. Uh, it is to be observed on the first day of the week. This is when our worship services take place. It is done as a commemoration. It is done uh, because on the night in which he was betrayed, uh, Jesus gathered about with his disciples and uh, explained to them uh, what was going to transpire. He explained to them beforehand that he was going to leave them, but this was it. This was the night. And in that, as he gathered uh, around the table, we know that uh, he explained what his sacrifice would be all about. He explained that his body would be broken he explained that his blood would be shed. And so he invited them to take bread, to take uh, some uh, grape juice and uh, eat and drink those so that um, they would remember. And then in the first century, this is what the church did according to Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, that they gathered together on the first day of the week and they broke bread. They observed this Lord's Supper. Jesus did this because his father instructed him to do so. He did this and he suffered the agony of the painful death on the cross. He did this so that we might have eternal life that we might remember his body, that we might remember the blood that flowed from his body, and that as we remember that, we'll be so greatly touched and understand that Jesus took on the sins of the world through the sacrifice that he made on that day. Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that your divine plan included that Jesus would come to earth, that he would be the master teacher, that we have his gospels that explain the magnificence of his understanding, that he was able to perform miracles so that he could prove exactly who he was. But most of all, as we gather about the table, we commemorate his death. We understand that his body racked in pain upon the cross and as we partake of this bread help us to remember that part of the sacrifice we pray this in his most holy name amen let's pray for the fruit of the vine 
we understand, dear Heavenly Father, that the blood that flows through our body is that is that uh, life-giving liquid that nourishes the whole body. We know that uh, the body has so much blood in it, and uh, we know that Jesus shed that innocent blood. It uh, flowed from his head, his hands and his feet and his side. I just pray that we would commemorate that through the drinking of this fruit of the vine, that we would remember that life-giving blood that forgives our sins. Be with us as we partake. We pray it in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And with the Lord's Supper being completed for convenience at this time, we have slotted in our worship service uh, our giving back to the Lord. Um, we uh, understand that uh, the church functions with the monies that come into it. We have biblical precedent for this in our New Testament that the Apostle Paul let people know that they were to lay by in store that which uh, with they were prospered. In the Old Testament days, they tithed, they they gave, and it was it was a form of a sacrifice. Giving is to be sacrificial. We are to give as we have prospered. Let's let's remember it this time. Uh, how prosperous that we have been and let it be reflected in our giving. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful that you love us and that you care for us. We're so thankful that we have this small means by which we can show that love through our giving back to you. We just pray that the stewards of this church will use these monies uh, so that uh, your word can be spread that these monies will be utilized to help those who are in need. Be with us as we give. Help us to understand that you love a cheerful giver. Help us to give with praise and thanksgiving. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. The last song we'll sing is number 148. One forty eight, the title is I Keep Falling in Love with Him. <clears throat> I Keep Falling in Love with Him. <clears throat> I keep falling in love with Him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over, and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over, and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over, and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. 
Oh, what a love between my Lord and I I keep falling in love with him Over and over and over and over again I hope that you enjoyed the singing as much as I do. I know that the Lord was praised in our offering to him. And it was an offering to him. It was an offering of praise. We praise the Lord because our Lord is worthy of being praised. Uh, I have a short lesson for you this evening. Uh, uh, the thought is a little bit provocative, but uh, I think that uh, I think that the uh, the lesson will will help each of us to understand a little bit uh, about um, the way the Lord wants us to to work our lives. The title of the lesson is. Um, do we have multiple personalities? I read this article. I've uh, tweaked it a bit to uh, put it in uh, lesson form. Uh, it's not going to last a, a real long time. And I hope that uh, through this lesson, as as we listen and we absorb it, I uh, hope that as I prepared it, I will be able to make the points that need to be made. And uh, uh, we understand that, that there is a multi-personality mental disorder. I don't want to make light of that. I don't want to make fun of that. I am just taking that and utilizing it into something that we have to be careful about in our lives. So I'm not talking about any mental disorder. I'm talking about a spiritual disorder. Um, do you think sometimes you act like two different people? I'll give you a time to process that for just a moment. Do you ever think that you act and feel, maybe I should reverse those, feel and act like two different people. I don't know about you, but uh, I, I'm i guilty sometimes, and we, we all need to be careful about that. Often, I find myself doing things that I know I shouldn't do. And I find myself saying things that I should not say. Right? We're, we're guilty of this. These are sins of commission. Doing things that we know are wrong. And yet we do them anyway. Saying things that might hurt people. Saying things that um, we just should left should leave unsaid. And with that, uh, maybe, maybe you can relate to that. I'm going to, again, give you pause. Think about that for just a moment. Have you ever done something and after you finished doing it, you said, I didn't want to do that. Why did I do it? And sometimes the words that flow uh, out of our mouths that come from our hearts are very, very, very similar. We say something and, and it's, it's, it's so tough, isn't it? Because once those words escape us, we can't pull them back in. Even if they were hurtful words that we apologize for, even if we repent of it, Sometimes the damage that's done, the consequences of those words are, are immeasurable, even though we did not want to say them. With that, maybe you understand where I'm getting at when I say that sometimes, sometimes it feels like we have two different people inside of us. Hmm.
one of them is trying to do the right thing and another is trying to do the wrong thing. Sometimes it feels like we have multiple personalities. This is a spiritual personality disorder. It is saying things that we should not say and doing things that we should not do. And so maybe you're, un you're, you're asking yourself the question, scratching your head a little bit and saying, where are you going to go with this? And is there any spiritual backing for what this guy is saying? If we turn to the seventh chapter of the book of Romans, I'll give you a moment to, to find that. Romans chapter 7, and we're going to look first at verses 22 and 23. All right. <clears throat> Romans chapter 7, verses 22 and 23. Notice what the Apostle Paul said here. For I joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man. But I see a different law in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is in my members. Do you see what Paul is saying? He's got a spiritual multiple personality disorder. Look at this. I joyfully concur with the law of God. I know what I'm supposed to do. Yet, that's, that's in me. That's in the inner man. But I see a different law in the members of my body. Even though I know what I'm supposed to do, I don't always do those right things. It's if there is a war waging. You know, we've all seen that little cartoon where uh, a person has an angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder. And the devil is saying, go ahead and do that. It's okay. It feels good. It's fun. And the angel on the other side says, hold on a minute. This is not what God wants you to do. He may even say, even though this might be momentarily pleasurable, it's not what the Lord wants you to do. And the apostle Paul saw this within him. This was a Holy Spirit inspired apostle of the Lord. And he cops to the notion that there are things waging war within him that are opposed to one another. And he says, making me a prisoner to the law of sin, which is in my members. <clears throat> he admits, wow, I do these things. Perhaps I say these things. And this isn't me. This isn't what I'm supposed to be. Now, if we go down to verse 24 and 25, all right? Now, let's hold on just a minute. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel exactly the way the Apostle Paul felt <clears throat> in these verses, saying, I know what the inner man wants me to do. I know the inner man wants me to do the right things. But then I see another man working in my body to do the very things that I abhor. The very things that I hate. And this can cripple us sometimes. It can cripple our witness for the Lord. Because... If we hope to make a good impression upon people as a Christian, if we hope to bring people to the Lord, we need to stand fast 
as bastions of righteousness and godliness. When we allow our bodies to do things and our mouths to say things that we should not, we cannot properly witness for the Lord. And Paul sums it up in verses 24 and 25, where he says, Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? He's saying, how do I overcome this? I'm a human being. I can be tempted in all forms. What do I do about it? How do I break free of it? And then, because the Apostle Paul is inspired by the Holy Spirit, he said, after the question is, who shall set me free from this body of death? He says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus did the work. And it's only through Jesus Christ that we can, in our lives, separate the wrong things from the right things. Paul felt like a wretched man when he saw this spiritual uh, uh, multiple personality disorder that he had. And you know what? We ought to feel wretched too. We may feel like that same wretched person when we know that we do things and we say things that we should not. But Paul found his hope and his joy and has salvation in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the reason we have redemption. It's not our perfect behavior. And we know that because we know ourselves as people and we know our foibles, we know our idiosyncrasies. We know that we are prone to make mistakes. When we feel like sometimes we're just not stacking up to the way God wants us to stack up. Remember, Jesus died to save us from that crippling feeling. Now, as I close the lesson, we can't allow these things to stagnate us. We need to look for the joy found in Jesus instead of focusing on how many times we mess up. Because if we focus on how many times we err, if we focus on how many times we slip up, it will cripple us. And what we need to remember is what Jesus did to set us free from that. So if you find yourself doing things, saying things that you should not. They are not out of the ordinary. Look at the Apostle Peter and some of the things that he said and he did. Look at Paul, who was Saul persecuting Christians before he became the great apostle and writer of many of these letters that we find in our New Testaments. These were people that did things that were wrong and they had to be righted. We now look at Peter's strengths rather than his weaknesses. We don't look at Paul as the persecutor of Christians, but as the savior of the Gentiles. Why? 
because they all knew that through Jesus Christ, the joy could be found in their lives. And even if they err, because Jesus died for our sins, through repentance, we have the forgiveness that is only there through what Jesus did on the cross. I hope this message hit home. It hit home for me as I prepared it because I know that I'm a human being and, and that I have warts just like everybody else does. What we need to understand that we, we can't feel wretched about it, but rather we need to correct it. When we say things and we do things that are wrong, we need to pray to the Lord for forgiveness. And we know that because of what Jesus did on the cross, that he will re forgive us if we repent of those things. Children of God have this advantage. Children of God are God's people, God's chosen people. They become those chosen people by obeying Jesus into salvation by confessing Jesus as the Son of God, by repenting of our former lives and hinging on the fact that, that God will forgive us of those sins and being baptized for the remission of our sins. If you haven't come to the Lord, this is your invitation this evening. Just call, get in touch with us, and we will be there for you. I hope this message is, has touched home, and I hope that uh, all of us will feel like that uh, even though we are weak many times, that we have strength in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the time that we've had this evening. I pray that through singing songs of praise, observing the Lord's Supper, and just listening to a part of your word uh, broken down to us, that uh, we have satisfied the needs that uh, we have to worship you in spirit and in truth. Bless us as we do, dear Heavenly Father. Help us to understand that we have forgiveness only through you. Help us to understand even though th when we slip up that uh, uh, you're there to to help us to get ourselves back on our feet to go down the path that we should go down. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, in our lives and help us with all of our might to do the godly things that we need to do to be saved and to live with you forever. Continue to be with us. Help us to look forward to the next time that we're together again. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe. May God bless you all.